Hello, Marcus. How are you doing? Hi, Diego. I'm fine. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, well, thanks for coming and having this conversation with me. Uh, we have had already a couple of videos before this one uh, showing the people how everything works at Red Hat and the OpenShift team. Uh, so it's a pleasure to have you here. And that's going to be my first question. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your uh, work with Red Hat and what are you doing currently? Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, I'm not working for the OpenShift team, so I'm actually working for Java's middleware. And uh, I have a very strong background in Java EE and application servers in general. Um, and I've been looking into like upstream projects as a developer advocate for almost one and a half years by now. So I know how to work my, my way around all these awesome communities and JBoss. And uh, yeah, Wildfly is uh, one of my, my biggest, like, I, I don't want to call it pet project, but because it's just a solid server. Um, so, but it's my, my go-to application server in Java EE when I really want to try out something. And uh, because everybody is talking about containers these days and Kubernetes and all this awesome stuff, um, I actually try to work my way around that on like a typical developer laptop setting, which is um, like mostly Windows based, right? So, um, and uh, I came across OpenShift and the awesome all-in-one VM, uh, that grand uh, kind of spin-up. Like um, it, it was, it was just an insane, great experience to have everything on one machine, right? And whenever I had to do like a demo with uh, Wildfly or EAP, and I could just throw it on OpenShift as an image, like a Docker image, it just worked for me. So um, I mean. Those teensy little tips and tricks like port forwarding and whatnot, um, you just come across those. And uh, this is what I've been playing around. And this is why um, OpenShift has uh, kind of caught my attention um, because I was sick of trying to get Docker and Kubernetes running on my Windows machine. Yeah, and uh, I think almost everyone that is following our blog, uh, also they can find several blog posts that you have created around exactly that. So, uh, well, right now I encourage everyone, uh, if they have not checked Marcus's like a blog post, please go and do so. They, they are really great. And thank you also for all the collaboration that we have had there. Um, I also would My like pleasure. to ask you... No, oh, no. Uh, what, what is it? What was like your first impression when you started like working with the with the communities? Uh, I know that a lot of people that work in other kinds of companies, uh, they they are a little bit shocked or surprised about the work that Red Hat is doing with the open like open source communities. So, what was your first impression? How was that that you started like working with them, and how has been your experience so far? Um, that's an interesting question because, um, I mean, I wasn't born in Red Hat, right? So I had a life before that. And uh, I've been working for uh, like a typical ISV. So I have been, I've been working with application servers of all kinds, like literally blue, red, doesn't, doesn't really matter, um, anything but open source. But uh, I always liked the, the JBoss community particularly because they had some great stuff in there. So um, let's just mention Archelion, for example. Like it's a remote integration testing framework. So um, it helps a developer to test something that runs on the server while also controlling the life cycle of the server. Um, if it's a managed or embedded server, or like even the cube extension allows you to test uh, locally Docker images, including the complete life cycle of a Docker image. So. I always kind of had like a deep relationship with the open source JBoss community and onboarding Red Hat and, and working as a developer advocate was like a, a natural fit at that point. And uh, I really had a hard time to talk about anything that isn't open source. And uh, the open source communities under those this big JBoss umbrella, for example, they are just warm and welcoming and, and helpful and there's so many people out there i met over the last couple of years um we were still in great contact right so i mean whenever i had like a question so there's like this teensy little new feature that isn't documented well yet because it's just open source and 
that's not a productized version, um, I can just shoot them an email or reach them via IAC. So it's so open, it's so welcoming, and they have a lot of knowledge out there in the open source communities. I just love that kind of software. Okay, that's that's great, and I think that's an experience that many of our developers, uh, well, Red Hat as a company, uh, I think they are going to relate to that or have a similar experience. And since you mentioned the entire thing about the team, and that's something similar to what what I live, uh, where is your team located? Because uh, right now Red Hat's like headquarters that's in Raleigh, but I'm located in Atlanta. So tell us a little bit about where you're located and where is your entire team? Because I'm almost certain that it is going to be a, a really interesting experience to share with everyone. Um, awesome. Um, actually, I'm uh, located in Munich, um, like 14 miles to the northeast of Munich. Um, my team is is a funny definition because the complete team is like spread all over the world. So there's somebody in Taiwan, um, I'm in Europe, uh, there's somebody in Sweden, and the headquarters, like my management sits like in Westford. And uh, I think that's just a great distribution. So my, my former boss was like in San Francisco or Bay Area in general. So uh -huh. yeah, we are pretty much working across the, across the globe and, and nobody really cares about where somebody is actually like physically right now and right here. Um, yeah. Plus, everybody is like traveling like crazy. So I'm flying out to Atlanta for Def Nexus um, okay. on Sunday. So if we get a chance to All meet, right. just let me know. Oh, that sounds perfect. Actually, that would be great. I didn't know that you were coming. So there you go. Uh, also, my team is like my boss is also in the, in the Bay Area. Some of them are in Raleigh, like right there in the Red Hat Tower. Uh, others are like, well, some of the evangelists are like a in Westford, in Canada, some in Australia. So, so it's a, kind of like a similar experience. And I've always kind of like found it interesting because not every company works the same, but I guess you, you begin to find more and more companies working that way. Yeah, still, I think this is pretty yes. unique. Like the, the heavy um, percentage of real remote workers um, plus the, the distribution like all over the globe. It's amazing. Like wherever I travel and I like, did 30 events last year um, mm -hmm. and wherever I travel there's somebody from Red Hat that I could just run into that's amazing yeah, yeah and uh, tell me a little bit more about that like uh, you mentioned like how many events did you did last year 30 did you do last year? 30 okay that's that's a lot so uh, where did they take you what kind um, of event do, do you go to it's, it's mostly like Java centered conferences because um, I mean, middleware is obviously like centered around Java. This is the programming languages that, that enterprises run as of today. Application servers are still the platform choice for many, many enterprises. So this is where the majority of enterprise developers really sit. So I've been traveling to Belgium for great beer for um, DevOps. I've been traveling to the UK for another DevOps UK version. Um, I have been in uh, Atlanta again, like for Def Nexus last year. And ob obviously like Java one and, and the real big ones in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I think I, I can barely recall, like I, I enjoyed Belgrade. So they uh, run a couple of conferences, uh, one day things under a Vox umbrella. Um, and the Belgrade was one of the best box conferences I had like last year in, in total. I've been in Russia, uh, St. Petersburg. So okay. yeah, really, I mean, the, the only teensy little part of the world I haven't been to is like Asia, um, not okay. to mention. It's, it's going to be an interesting ride over the next couple of months. And I, I hope my travels will take me there at some point. Well, that sounds great. Take some pictures and share it with us, and I will. we are going to be able to follow you wherever you go. Um, well, apart from that, uh, other thing that I, that I wanted to like perhaps bring the conversation a little bit back to uh, OpenShift. Uh, you mentioned Wildfly, uh, and I think perhaps a couple of months ago I published one of your uh, articles around like Wildfly and, and OpenShift. So, and you do several technologies that most of them, like you mentioned, are centered around Java and the Java word. But uh, 
I would like to know, like, tell us a little bit about the tools that you use in your day by day work. What what kind of things do you use? What kind of like things do you experiment or play with? Okay, um, I do use an IDE. My main IDE is still napkins, which is probably um, because of my history. I always like napkins. Uh, JavaScript developer tooling has a lot tighter integration with OpenShift. Um, NetBeans is trying to experiment around that and get some first integration set up, but we're not there yet. So my Java EE development is uh, is still there. Um, yeah, I mentioned JavaScript developer tools. I do use a bunch of text editors, like not not them because I I really I don't want to want to hurt myself, but um, <laughs> Um, what else do I use? OpenShift to a reasonable extent. Um, funny enough, Docker Machine and uh, all the local Docker tooling that I need to just play around with that. Um, I use Fabric 8 a lot and the Fabric 8 um, plugins. So Fabric 8 is kind of the DevOps framework that is um, tightly integrated with OpenShift and really understands the Java EE developers world. So you have a bunch of Maven plugins that help you to build Docker images um, or even generate your Kubernetes files or even upload your generated local Docker images, like pushing them to the to the registry, right? So yeah. um, Fabric 8 does a lot more than that. So build complete Jenkins workflow. There's a Nexus included with that. And it's all based on OpenShift. So it's kind of the perfect fit for the Java EE developer with OpenShift. Um, okay. What else do I use? Um, um, I use Photoshop and PowerPoint, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> probably what I have yeah. to do. Yeah, usually I use GIMP instead of Photoshop, but yeah, basically the same thing. Um, Fair enough. So, I have just like I know that you are busy, so the, I I just have perhaps like two more questions, and that would be, uh, what's your opinion of the latest version of of OpenShift, and perhaps like if you can think of like one uh, new feature that you would like to have in, in the versions that they are working right now, what would that be? Um, okay, I uh, have to admit that I'm only using OpenShift Origin. So I've okay. never even touched OpenShift Enterprise. Um, I really like the operational experience. Like I think of OpenShift as adding user experience to operational people. So like the classical platform as a service. And I, um, I kind of started looking into the source to image technologies and I like the approach but it's not where I want it to be uh, for Java EE developers. So we okay. just need a little bit more. And if I could make a wish, I would like to see like a local development environment. Um, so maybe the all-in-one VM, which exposes the complete Docker host and the registry. So I don't have to mingle around with the Docker machine and with the Docker and whatnot on my local machine and just have OpenShift. And I also want OpenShift to acknowledge the Java e developers' needs. Like maybe have a template which spins up a Nexus and uh, a Jenkins server and uh, also allows me to have like a complete um, round trip, like a software development lifecycle. So I, I think I really wanna want OpenShift to be a little bit more embracing for the individual technologies and not just embrace the bare minimum as a docker image right so um, okay this is okay i can get that running but um, i think people understand that it takes a while to get to a docker image and if you have like php um, which is an interpreted language right this is easy mm -hmm. so source to image is a great fit for interpreted languages um, but if you have like a compile step in between, and if you have mm -hmm. like approvals and staging and, and whatnot, like complex enterprise projects, OpenShift is designed to run final artifacts. And uh, I'd like it to be a little bit more supportive for developers, I guess. 
Okay, well, that's actually something quite interesting, and thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to note it. Like It's recorded, so uh, I'm going to let <laughs> awesome. the, the team know. Uh, and, uh, well, I also thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the people that are going to be watching this video? Um, guys, follow OpenShift. I mean, OpenShift, you probably know that it's the best platform as a service out there in the world. I haven't seen anything better. And uh, I had a hard time getting used to Docker containers and latest buzz because I'm just a Java e developer at heart. Um, so all those infrastructure things with ports and whatnot, that, that was really killing me. And OpenShift eased that pain to an insane amount, right? So I, I really started to embrace everything around because OpenShift made it easy and transparent again. So. Yeah, thanks to every developer out there working on OpenShift because I highly appreciate what you guys actually did. And uh, keep the buzz humming. Keep it coming and give me some more great versions. And if you have like a teensy little heart for a Java E developer, think about me <laughs> and make some more <laughs> Java E developer changes. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that, that sounds great. And well, thank you. Uh... I'm, I'm certain that also the community thanks you for all the articles and all the work that you have put out there. Like uh, they are always well received in our blog. So thanks for that. And apart from that, have a great day. Thank you. I'll keep continuing blogging. So there will be more, definitely. It's a pleasure to Thank be part. You. Thanks for the interview. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.